Greetings adventurers, my name is Kramer, and good costuming or garb is one of the most important building blocks to get right for your character or persona. It's pretty much the first and most easy thing that you can do to get into the hobby, whether it's LARP or historical reenactment or fantasy reenactment, but I also have found that it is one of the areas in which newcomers into the hobby can get really stuck and paralyzed and confused. And I don't blame you at all because there's a lot of options, there's a lot of information, and you want to feel like you're getting it right. Right. So here are 10 fantasy medieval costume mistakes to avoid as we are building out our kits in the coming year. And don't worry if you've made some of these mistakes, it's a mistake, not eternal damnation. I've made some of them too. So mistake number one is using poorly designed or cheap costumey plate armor. Doesn't matter if it's made out of steel, iron, it doesn't matter if it's metal, that doesn't mean that it's good armor. What we will call costume armor is not flattering on the human body and it also doesn't function with the human body. Instead of buying a whole cheap suit of plate armor, do yourself a huge favor and just spend that money on one good cuirass or breastplate or whatever piece it is that you're looking at. It is going to look better, it is going to function better, and it is going to be able to be taken with you as you continue to level up your guard and add more pieces. Cheaper costume armor is going to bruise you and cause you discomfort at best, and at worst, it could actually seriously injure you. And that is because it doesn't conform and attach to your body in the way that armor is supposed to. Real historical armor is a highly sophisticated piece of equipment. It is so much more complicated than just having metal over your person. Armor is a fashion statement. It is a sign of wealth and capability. Wouldn't you rather have a really nice, well-fitted, tailored breastplate than a whole suit of armor that doesn't fit or function. I am literally begging you. I gave this advice to my best friend in the world while we were trying to prepare for a LARP. He said he wanted a full suit of armor. I said, don't do that. Use that money. Buy a breastplate. You will be happier. Uh, and he said, nope, I want to get the full suit. It has the aesthetic that I want. And I said, okay, it's your money. And I helped him pick out the best one according to his budget and according to my sensibilities and what I know about armor. And he has since told me that he wishes he had taken my advice and he is now searching actively for other alternatives because it sort of gave him a hard time while we were at the event. What you really want to look for if you are in the market for armor is armor that is going to attach to your base layer, which will usually be a gambeson or an arming jack, and that is because it is going to move better with you and have better weight distribution. What you want to avoid are armors that either just strap over, say, your arm with the use of buckles or strap to other pieces of your armor because that is never going to function the way that it's supposed to. And especially in the case of a breastplate or a cuirass, what you want to avoid are pieces that go all the way down to your hips. That's essentially how I'm able to decide whether or not a suit of armor is even worth looking at just from seeing one picture is how low that breastplate goes. Because you need to be able to move at your hips and your legs are gonna come up. That is, your, your hips are a hinge. It's a very mobile area of your body. If you have a breastplate that comes all the way down here and you go to sit or you go to bend over or you slip and fall on the battlefield, Field, your legs are going to move and that is going to knock your breastplate all the way up into your throat and that is why costume armor like that is potentially a, a serious hazard and that is also why historically we see uh, these full suits of armor from say you know the 14th century the renaissance and stuff like that where they have these sort of skirts those skirts articulate so that you can raise and move your legs and then the armor comes down to your waist and then there are two pieces there's a seam those two pieces work together to allow you to move the waist that you need to in order to function as a human being. That is why the armor is designed that way. It's not just because it was like the aesthetic that they like, it's because that's the way armor has to work. And I know, trust me, I know that the line of thinking is, well, I don't wanna have to buy multiple pieces. It's more expensive, it's more cumbersome. It'd be much easier if I could just get one piece of armor that does everything and covers my entire torso. But it simply doesn't work like that. Your body mechanics will not allow it. So the rule of thumb I'm going to give you for breastplates and a cuirass is, that it should not drop below your belly button. And that is also how modern ballistic armor is sized as well. Now, before I continue, I have two very important announcements because this video is brought to you by me. When I started this channel two years ago, I simply decided that this is what I want to do as my job. And it's what I spend all of my time focusing on and learning about and building. So I'm very happy to announce that we have a Living Anachronism Discord channel, finally. And we try to structure it in a way to encourage the community to share what projects we're working on and find new ideas and learn new 
new tips and get inspired and of course, make new friends. It's completely free to join with special perks for Patreon members and joining the Discord is also a great way to make sure you never miss an upload if you don't trust YouTube to tell you. So a super huge shout out goes out to Randy Kalf, Beercules, Divine Mercy, and Faust who have helped me set up the Discord and are my current moderators. I have also added four new tiers to my Patreon, all of which give you exclusive access to me so that we can talk about costumes, garb, kit, and character design. And it scales and stacks the higher the tiers so that you can ask me questions and get personalized answers, share what you're working on so far and ask me for advice and recommendations and we can just have a conversation about your character and your garb. It's something that I love to do, it's so much fun and it's one of the main reasons why I try to get so many of my friends into LARPing is so that then I get to have fun helping them as they are first getting into it. So now that is an option that is available to you as well. At the moment, I'm trying not to stretch myself too thin too quickly so that I have enough time to talk to everybody as we're trying this out. So in the three tiers with the most personal interaction, there are only 16 total available slots combined. I think it's really cool. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun, but the slots may fill up quickly. They also may not. I have absolutely no idea. But a super huge thank you goes to all of the adventurers already supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much. I know I don't say it enough. Thank you. You're helping me to do what I love to do and feed myself at the same time. And food, food has gotten very expensive lately. So the links to the Discord and to my Patreon are both down in the description and the pinned comment. So I hope to talk to you soon. Mistake number two is wearing your belt on your hips rather than on your waist. Women don't seem to have as much of a problem telling these two parts of your body apart, but guys really do need a helping hand. So guys, these are your hips down here where the hip bone is and then slightly beneath that, if you were to hinge at your hips, you can feel where that crease is because your legs are coming in to your torso. Those are your hips. Your true waist is actually above the hip bone and beneath your lowest rib. It's very squishy because there's nothing there aside from your organs. And if you put your hands on your waist, you will find that your fingers go there to meet in the center at your belly button. In the medieval period, belts go on your waist, above your hips. Belts that go on your hips are very much a modern thing because of the pants that we wear. When you are wearing your belt over your tunic correctly around the waist, it's going to shorten your torso and it's going to make your chest and your shoulders look broader. And on women, it's going to help accentuate your hips. Wearing your belt properly over your waist, above your hips also gives the proper support your belt needs to hang pouches and knives off of it with proper weight distribution. because. Instead of having to cinch the belt down so it doesn't just slide down your legs, it is balancing on your hip bones. So look what happens when I put my belt down on my hips like we might be used to in the modern day. This looks completely wrong. It makes my torso look disgustingly long and it also turns my torso into one straight rectangle rather than having that coveted V shape. And you will find the more that you are wearing your garb, this on your waist is naturally where your belt actually wants to be. It's very comfortable, feels very supportive. And I know the next question is, Kramer, what if I have a little bit of a gut? And I know I'm entering into potentially dangerous territory here, but the same principle applies. The belt should be going on your waist because it is, I think, universally true that it is better functionally, it offers better support, and it also offers a better silhouette. Mistake number three is an easy one. I've talked about it before, and that is using Halloween costumes for your garb. Don't do it. Just simply don't do it. Everybody has to start somewhere. I just wouldn't recommend that you start here. They're shiny, thin, not tailored correctly. The leather that they're using is never going to be a real leather. And few of the pieces that you use, if any of them, are going to scale up with you as you continue to up your garb game. In fact, you'd be lucky if any of them lasted that long to begin with. A costume is meant to be worn for one or two hours once or twice a year during a party. But garb really is clothing, and that is the difference, that you should feel so comfortable and your garb should be so functional that you are so excited to put it on every time that you wish you could wear it every single day of your life. That is authenticity. Halloween costumes might be a cheap and easy uh, answer if you are really short on time, but ultimately you are going to be saving yourself a huge headache if you just skip right over them and get the base layers of your garb right from the get-go. Mistake number four is using black base layers, especially black shoes shirts. With very rare exception for specific costume designs or maybe some cosplays where you know that black is what you need in order to get the right look, black is going to be less versatile. It's going to absorb heat from the sun, which means you're going to get hotter, and it sticks out like a sore thumb when you see it underneath other garments. In addition to being historically inaccurate, black is also so dark that it tends to hide the texture of your fabric, making it appear very one-dimensional and flat, and then visually it just sort of creates this like 
black hole on your body while I'm looking at the rest of your costume. Unless you are working with a really interestingly textured fabric that will pop through even though it's black, grays, greens, browns, blues, and reds are all going to be better options if you want a darker underlayer, but you still want it to come through and give your garb some depth. Mistake number five is wearing too much or too little gear. And this is what I'm coining as the principle of being comfortably over encumbered. Because if you're wearing too much, it just looks absolutely ridiculous. You aren't one of these guys from the labyrinth, relax. But if you're not wearing enough to like reasonably carry the things that you would need to have, like your keys, then you just look like you're a walking model for a costume and not a real person. And feel free and encouraged to adapt. If something isn't working, you don't like it, remove it. You don't need it. If you're too hot, take off a piece of clothing. And the reverse, if it's cold, it is clothes, not a costume. And you're a person, not a video game character. So it's okay to adapt and change according to your environment or according to your mission. I would argue that it's actually necessary. The one caveat to this is that it's perfectly acceptable to have too much or too little if you can justify it in the story of your character. Remember that what you wear says something about you. So as with all of these mistakes, it's only a mistake if you didn't do it on purpose. Mistake number six is designing your costume and who your character is separately and then trying to like mash them together. This is something that I am personally super guilty of. My personal recommendation is that you should design your character and who your character is first and then build the costume afterwards rather than coming up with the cool costume and then having to reverse engineer a personality or worse yet, not having one at all. This is pretty much everything that I wore when I went to the Reckoning LARP last year. I designed most this myself, I knew it would fit together, I knew it would work, I knew that it would function properly. And it does, I like this kit a lot. Actually, Kit, shout out to Skill Tree, made the observation that at the event, I looked like I was really comfortable in my kit, like I really knew how it worked, like it felt very natural. And not to toot my own horn, but he's right, because I do. But this kit also absolutely does not tell the right story of the character that I wanted to play, which was a young, optimistic, charismatic, potential leader and an ex-captain of a ranger battalion. This version with just a couple simple changes I think works way better. Go ahead and leave a comment why you think that is and it might be a really good discussion to take over to the Discord. Mistake number seven is not testing your kit. Trying everything on once and then not wearing it again until you actually go to an event. Again, it's authenticity. You probably have a pocket that you always put your phone in or that you always put your keys in. You need to have that same level of familiarity and specificity with your garb. Because the last thing that you want to do is look in the mirror and go, I look fantastic. And then die during the first skirmish because you're fumbling with your potion pouch because you never tried to open it with your gloves on before. True story, that happened to me. Not just because of the gloves, but because I don't use potions in everyday life, even when I'm you know, going outside on an adventure. It's potions are just not something that I use. And so they handed me one when I went to this LARP and I went, okay, and I just stuck it in my pouch thinking, I'll remember. No, I didn't, you won't. You need muscle memory to learn Learn how to use those things. So run tests, take some time, go outside, enjoy the experience. And hopefully my videos are going to take some of the burden off of you so that you don't have to rediscover things that other people have already discovered. But I also can't replace the work that you need to do in order to become familiar with your own garb. That responsibility ultimately lies with you. Mistake number eight is accumulating expensive accessories before you have a solid base costume. If you are at the point where you're ready to either make a new purchase or start a new project, because you feel like you've reached a plateau. One, that's really exciting, congratulations. Two, make sure that your house is in order and the foundations are set before you start decorating the walls. If you have the option between um, maybe picking up a really nice new tunic to use or getting a really fancily engraved leather pouch, just make sure you really know which one of them is going to be more helpful for you right now. I've shown you in this video how you can make a really nice peasant costume, a nice starter costume with nothing but what you already have in your house. And that'll take you far, but it's not going to take you all of the way. Eventually, you're probably gonna get hungry for having something that looks better than that. So what I recommend is that you actually make like a little chart or a table so that you can categorize what it is that you need right now and what it is that you would like to have later. That way you can prioritize, spend your money wisely, and avoid any awkward transitional growing pains. There is a caveat to this as well. Obviously, if you are in a situation where you see like the perfect piece, you know you can't use it right now, but you also know you will definitely use it later, it's absolutely perfect and it's now or never, 
go for it. Those happen very rarely, have at it. But generally speaking, if you're looking to make an upgrade, don't just make any upgrade, really think about it before you do. Your costume is going to look better with a really nice tunic and a basic pouch than a really nice pouch with a really basic tunic. And I do mean basic in the sense that like you're using a Henley still. You should probably upgrade that before you get a new pouch. That's what I'm saying. Mistake number nine also applies to if you're planning on making purchases, and that is not understanding the market that we are in. For the most part, there is a little triangle that we have to acknowledge. Things can be cheap, things can be fast, or they can be good. And generally, you're not really gonna get all three. If something is really high quality, then it's going to take a lot of time to produce or it's going to be very expensive, probably both. If it's too cheap, it's probably made cheap too. But also keep an eye out for things that are way more expensive than they should be. That's why it's good to sort of just get an aggregate, get a feel for what an average tunic is priced at. Then you know whether or not you're looking at something that's really out of the ordinary. And for the love of all that is green and good, don't buy things from Amazon or Wish, sites like that. Not necessarily anything about those companies, but it's really difficult to tell if what you're looking at is the actual genuine article or if you're going to get scammed. There are tons of just trendy pop-up sites that are trying to make a quick buck that will steal pictures from reputable companies and then crop out the faces of the models and then just like post them. But you look at the pictures and you can't tell that there's anything wrong. Lucky for me, I recognize those pictures because I make it my business. It's like my hobby. I enjoy looking at all of these sites and being really familiar with all of their products. And I, I essentially memorize the catalogs. It's fun for me. Not everybody is going to have the time or inclination to do that. That's perfectly understandable. It's also why I'm here. <laughs> so for example, my friend wanted to buy a pair of leather greaves to go with a breastplate that he had just bought. So he went on Amazon and bought a pair of $20 leather greaves without consulting me first. I was very disappointed in him for doing that. Is $20 a good deal for leather greaves? No, of course it isn't. Nobody is making leather greaves for adults and selling them for $20 because $20 is never going to cover the cost of the materials and the labor for an item designed like this. But they shipped it to us, we unboxed it together and we looked at it and lo and behold, it was like cheap plastic fake leather over a piece of cardboard. And I did two seconds of research and I found the original, what this copycat was supposed to be. And I could tell that what they sent us was a knockoff because the rivets they used were different than the rivets in the picture. The original was from Museum Replicas and it was like $70. So if you're going to make a purchase, just make sure you are really informed or buying from a reputable site from a reputable company because you are far less likely to get scammed like that. And if you aren't sure, ask. That's a great thing to do in the Discord. There's a channel for that. Um, or if you are a member of my Patreon, then you can contact me directly. Please, please do that. Mistake number 10, real talk, is comparing yourself to other members of the community and then judging yourself based off of that. There are some people that have amazing kit and garb, just jaw dropping. How did you do this? I'm never going to be that good. I understand why that might be intimidating because you aren't quite sure what you're doing. You're the new guy. You don't know anybody. You don't know what's expected of you or the rules. I don't want to look worse than everybody else. Uh, maybe I just won't do it at all. Maybe it's not my thing. Don't limit yourself like that. Don't hold yourself back from joining such a fun hobby and having such a fun experience. The truth is, some people are going to look better than you. There will always be people that are further along their path than you, than me. I am constantly looking at Pinterest and Instagram to find people that have garb and kit that make me feel like a noob that started yesterday. Use that to motivate you, to inspire you. Try to talk to those people. They have lots that they can teach you. Some people have been doing this for decades. Some people just have a lot of money. You have no idea where you're going to be five years down the road, one year down the road, six months down the road. The only way you won't know is if you don't take the plunge and start now. So, so long as you're having fun and you have a good attitude and you are learning and constantly trying to improve, people will see that and they will honor that because a lot of us, most of us, I'd say the majority of us, just want to help you have fun and see you succeed. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you liked it and you are hungry for more, you can check out one of these videos here. And if you really liked it and you've been subscribed for a while and you wanna help support what I'm doing, then please consider checking out my Patreon. All the information on the new tiers is on the site. And don't forget to join the new Discord. This is gonna be a really big year for the channel. So I will talk to you soon. And in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures.